Mavericks last night in overtime, guys. This was a game, man. This was a, a roller coaster of a game, okay? But I loved it, and let's talk about why, okay? But first of all, I just gotta give a quick shout out to the Dallas Mavericks and the team and the roster and the fans. You guys have a squad out there in Dallas. I mean, I knew about you, but at the same time, I didn't even know. I did not know. Like, you guys are balling out there. I just have to give you guys some props. Honestly, like I love watching the game. That was very entertaining. You guys are amazing. I loved it. I love actually watching Mavericks games because I don't know if y'all heard it. You had to have noticed it. Every time they switch a shot or whatever, like they have mics on the rims and they amplify that noise. So it's just like such a dynamic experience watching Mavericks games. I love it. So yeah, that was a great game and you guys are amazing. But not amazing enough because we came out on top in overtime, 119 to 110. Now I know there's one thing that people are waiting for me to do. I already got it on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Matter of fact, I know LeBron fans are waiting for me to give him his credit. Listen, y'all have me mistaken. I think you guys go from video to video basis. Like y'all don't really be thinking about the full picture. I don't have any problem giving uh, LeBron his credit. Cause listen, I'm sitting there watching the game. I said, oh. Oh my, is he giving effort in the second quarter on defense? He's playing defense? Hold, hold the phone. People are calling me, hold the phone. Is he, is that effort I see in the beginning of the third quarter? Oh my God, I was, I was legit shook. I was shook. I said, I know he's not giving us effort this early. Usually playoff broad is saving himself so he, he will wait till like the last minute to really kick it into overdrive. But my man was giving effort not the first quarter, but but even still, at least second quarter and on, he was giving effort, and I was shocked, guys. That does not happen every day. We don't get effort from him every day in those earlier quarters. We don't. So this is a blessing. So I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna be grateful. Yes, I'm very grateful. I was like, oh my gosh, my man's is trying right now. I've never seen this this early. So I was very shook. I was so happy. I was. I felt like a LeBron fan. I'm like, yeah, yes. Those are the performances where he looks like the goat. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I understand y'all, the GOAT conversation is people are iffy about it and whatnot, but these are nights where it's clear to see why he's in that conversation. It period. You see it? You seen it. My man was stealing stuff. He was stutter step closing out. I said, I've never seen him give this much effort in a long time. I haven't given that effort on defense and, of course, just doing it on offense. He wasn't being passive. He was going in and getting his points. I was... Literally, I think I got on my knees at one point and started thanking the Lord above. I said, God, you are so good. The ma what did you do to him to make him do this? This early? So I was just very thankful. Um, people were, somebody tweeted me like, oh, so you like LeBron again or something like that? And I responded back like, did you see a difference in effort and intensity in this game? Like, I don't just be saying stuff. I don't just talk to talk. Like, in other games, like the Clipper game or whatever you want to reference, He'll not give effort until the very end, and even then he'll give a lackluster effort sometimes. But he just relies on his athleticism and stuff to get him an average stat line. You know, his average stat line. But the effort and intensity isn't there that we need to lead us through the game. He's our leader. I don't care how... AD just came off a 40-20 game, didn't he? I do not care. He's not the team leader, period. You know, when LeBron gives that effort and intensity, it hits a little different, okay? I, I love AD's game, I watched it. I, I was like the biggest fan, I was like in shock. I couldn't make a video about it. Senior year, it is, it's killing me right now, guys. Couldn't make a video about it, but that game had me shook. I was like, yes, finally we have, you know, somebody else to lean on, it's amazing. But even through all that, you know what I'm saying? LeBron is that leader that when he's scoring and when he's doing his thing and that effort and intensity is going through him, it's a different story. You know what I'm saying? It's a different feel. And I missed it, and we need that, we do. We, we desperately do. And so when he shows up and he does that, which I know he can, guys, he's the GOAT, right? He's in the GOAT competition, I know he can do this. You know what I'm saying? So that's why when I saw anything below this performance, you know, cause he can do better than this performance. We've seen him. But when I see stuff lower than this, like not giving that effort, even if he was giving the effort and he was missing, at least I'm seeing you try, you know? But for me to see him not even give that effort, it hurts coming off of Kobe, 20 seasons of Kobe, seeing effort being given, even if he's missing. And to not see that effort, yeah, I'm gonna be a little mad, I'm gonna be a little salty, of course. But when I see him give performances like this, I'm happy about it, and now I'm gonna turn the table on all the people in the summer that are saying that 
LeBron's old. Oh. You know, LeBron's not this and that. I still, even me being a Kobe fan, whatever, I'm not a LeBron fan. I still had him in my top three for this NBA season. People were being wildly disrespectful and putting him, he's not even top five for me right now, top 10. I'm like, are you seriously saying that or what? Cause like we know, you know what I'm saying? We know that's not true, okay? I'm not even a LeBron fan, but I mean, really, let's just face the facts. You know what I'm saying? You see what he did tonight? That impact he had, you know what I mean? That's top three, easily, easily. Now we can argue if it's higher than third. You know what I'm saying? First or second, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just saying. Then when he started playing like he did the Clippers and some of the other games, like this kind of that rocky road effort, I was like, that's when I can justify putting him lower because he's just not playing to his potential. But I knew he could. That's why I didn't take my statement back. And look at him, performing, showing out, doing what he's supposed to do. That's why he deserves to be in that top three. And guess what? Yes, he's old. Oh. That has nothing to do. Like he's still killing it. You know, look at Kawhi. How young is Kawhi? Look how old LeBron is. Look at their impact. Look what they're doing. Same. Crazy, right? So all y'all said he's old and washed up and then we have a fragile Anthony Davis. We're not going to be able to do anything. We're first seed in the West. It's only been five games. I don't even care. Wow. I don't even care. We're first seed in the West. Now, on the flip side of things, we're not completely out the woods. There were some iffy things in that game. There were some iffy things. First of all, I'm, I'm not even gonna like make fun. I'm not gonna do the whole routine that I usually do with KCP. Cause it's at this point, it's getting to be like not funny. It's, I'm serious. I'm not even trying to be joking. It's not funny at this point. Frank Vogel, I honestly, I don't think his defense is even justifying him being on the court for that long. Okay, he's getting unnecessary minutes. In my personal opinion, give them to someone else. Whoa. Give them to someone else. Point blank period. That's all I'm gonna say. That's that. We're just gonna move right on from that. He airballed like a layup or a floater that was like right in front of the rim. Oh. You know, like at this point, it's not something that's like, okay, he's just in a slow slump. Like he's detrimental at this point, as we can all see, like it's proven. Look at the stats, look at what he's doing. Look at his efficiency rating. He's detrimental. You need to sit him until, or, or talk to him. A critical intervention needs to happen or something. This can't just keep going and we keep giving him minutes as if we don't see what's going on. You know, I understand Frank, you're trying to take up for him and defend him. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So I, I get what you're trying to do, but let's be real at some point and let's come to this conclusion. Let's, let's get this taken care of because this is not gonna continue. It can't. It's getting very old and it's only been five games. Okay, so that's that's the one thing. Second thing, Kyle Kuzma, he got back out there. He scored nine points. His three-pointer seemed to be a little off. I know this is his first game coming back, so I was interested to see how we would fit in the rhythm of things and if, if stuff would still flow. And I don't know, last night was a little weird in that our offense was just bad in general, especially the first half. Like, we were taking a lot of threes. We were missing a lot of threes, but we were just still taking them. It was a lot of long shots. Rebounding was horrific and we'll talk about that but our our offense wasn't really flowing like it was kind of you kind of get into these stagnant patches and it's just like everybody's kind of looking at each other like what are we gonna do who's gonna be the one to take over i think we need to be looking at it as a team mentality like everybody needs to be cutting moving around at all times you know what i'm saying we shouldn't be looking at lebron waiting for him to take over or looking at ad waiting for him or is danny green gonna like we should all be cutting and moving and everything should be flowing so yeah the offense was a little stagnant so i don't think it was like Anything against Kyle Kuzma, I think he's gonna come into it once we kind of figure out the rotations and everything. And you know, once he's really back, we'll see exactly how he fits in. So I'm not even worried about that. Rebounding, major issue. I hate to say it, cause I really liked JaVale, but JaVale was, at some point I tweeted, I'll pay Frank Vogel to take him out the game. Like he was not rebounding. I don't wanna say he wasn't giving effort, cause I don't know what it was. He just wasn't boxing out. He would just jump. Like where are you jumping? Get towards the ball, like it was just, hard to watch, I was just confused, you know what I mean? Uh, defense wise, he wasn't doing it either. You know, Dwight Howard came in and they brought Boban in on their side to counter that, which is a great counter, like, oh my gosh, the Mavericks lineup is unbelievable, but Boban came in and made it hard on Dwight, but he was really out there giving that effort, trying to box out, getting those boards and stuff, and it was hard for him. So we were still just in a rebound deficit, okay? The offensive rebounds they got was, unacceptable and I thought that was something we were gonna talk about at halftime and then like okay we come out of halftime maybe they just weren't thinking about rebounding but now we're gonna all give that effort still wasn't there you know it was still really tough to watch I'm sitting there like man put me out there I mean I'm gonna stand at least under the back basket to get it like 
At least I'm gonna be in position. I can do that. I can run. To, I can run to my spot. You know, put me there. But it was hard to watch. So, so there has to be something that we get over. That this rebounding can't be. Because there's certain teams with this length. You got Boban, Kristaps. We can't be playing around with rebounds. I think Dwight and Javale. We're used to being such a big team. Anthony Davis right there. Like we're gonna get these rebounds. But you can't. You can't. So that has to be a concerted effort. So that's something I, uh, we gotta bounce back from. I know this was just this one game that was horrible, but if we're playing like this against big teams, that's a problem. So we need to get that under control now. But beside that, I was glad Alex Caruso got some earlier minutes. That was interesting to see, and I liked it. He did well in that role. I loved, loved that Frank Vogel. I like he's trying different things. Once again, I told you we have so many possibilities. And guess what? Rondo hasn't even touched the floor yet. Kuzma just barely touched the floor. You know what I'm saying? So we have so many different combinations we could try, different lines we can run. Who's gonna be our death lineup? Who's gonna be our closeout? Can Kuzma run a stretch of offense by himself when he's back so that LeBron and AD can rest together? Because right now we're like staggering them as it seems. So it's so many different options. And I like that Frank Vogel is trying certain ones out. KCP needs to be one that needs to be, you know, removed, but we won't talk about that. But I like that and just major props to Danny Green because Avery Bradley, sweetie, even when I saw you pull up that mid-range off the screen, I, I knew, I was like, why are you taking that? And he's capable of making it, but I just knew, Laker Prophet, Laker Prophet, I knew, I was like, he's, why are you, why are you shooting that? And he missed it, like, I thought, I thought it was over. I thought it was over, and then LeBron zinged it over to Danny Green, pumped, got him in the air. Why would you ever, by the way, splash it? I said, that's what you're here to do. Got that dead eye tattoo on your, <sighs> oh, come on now. I was so hyped. Everybody was hyped. Everybody in Lakerland was hyped. So this was a great game, you guys. It was a great test of like us being against another powerhouse roster you know, so to speak, and seeing how we do, seeing how we perform in overtime, trying to figure out these lineups. So I, once again, guys, I told you, Laker fans, I told you all we can do from that Clipper game is go up. All we can do from that Clipper game is get better. I told you guys that. Literally, I called it, man. And we're trending upwards. We're, we're learning stuff and we're figuring stuff out. We're starting to go this way. Guys, come on now. Come on now, what did I say? Other teams? They might have started here and, and they have nowhere to go but down. We have nowhere to go but up. And we're literally going that way. So I'm excited, guys. This was a great game. But yeah, guys, like this video if you enjoyed it. And I also want to know what you guys thought about this game, okay? What would you do with the lineups? I need all my YouTube comment coaches to let me know in the comments below. All right, follow me on my social medias to stay updated. I'm going to start going live once I hit 500 followers on Instagram. So follow me. Created a profile. Follow me. All right, click this video if you haven't seen it yet. Click here to subscribe to Jones Splash Squad. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And 